Welcome to my presentation about my internship from Loyola University, Maryland. Thank you for taking the time to view and provide me with feedback about my internship process. My name is Sarah Buck and I have been teaching at Edgewater Elementary for six years. I completed my internship here as well. I have two small children, Kaylee who is four and Cooper who is two. I've been married to my wonderful husband for almost 10 years. I'm currently a graduate student pursuing my master's in educational technology. I plan to graduate this July. I implemented a plan of professional learning opportunities for teachers at my school. I hosted a whole school technology training which we explored new technology tools that can be used in all grade levels and academic areas. I had two follow-up sessions for those teachers who like to explore the tech tools more. The second sessions were more in-depth sessions with a large majority of time devoted to teachers specific questions as well as hands-on help. Out of the four trainings, two covered the basic about the technology tools and the second two allowed for follow-up and digging deeper into those tools so that the teachers were more com comfortable implementing them into their classrooms. The learning objectives varied for each of the participants because of where they were and the levels of comfort with technology and change. However, there were a few main learning objectives that guided my internship and they are listed on the screen. My original timeline got pushed back due to weather. My second PD session got postponed because of snow and pushed back one week. My last PD session got pu pushed back because we were double booked because of other snow related issues. My principal made sure that I had enough time and days to complete my internship. I sent out my initial survey to about 65 staff members. In my survey, I wanted to see if my staff was dissatisfied with the amount of resources they had to help utilize our growing number of Chromebooks. My goal for my internship was to move my staff up through Eli's eight conditions of change. I wanted to see if the staff had sufficient knowledge and skills of technology and I wanted to provide them with different resources to help them implement technology into their classroom. By introducing them to the resources during my sessions, I was able to encourage their performance of the innovations. Of the 65 staff members, 15 responded. My biggest fear was having a lack of participation among my staff. My initial survey allowed me to see that the commitment level of the staff was high, which allowed me to become a leader of technology innovation. My first session was about using a Cricut. We went over all the basics of the machine as well as different materials we can use. I also had the staff work in grade level teams to complete an anchor chart about where or what they could use a cricket in their daily classroom. On this slide, there are some artifacts that I took away from the session. We did the activity where the staff looked into their curriculum to find ways they could incorporate using a cricket. I've included a couple of pictures of some of the grade levels anchor charts. I also have a few pictures of myself giving the presentation. I was pleasantly surprised at what the staff came up with on their anchor charts. I sent out a feedback form after my first PD session and I got 10 responses back. I had one person from every grade complete it with the exception of fifth grade. I received high marks for the workshop meeting the course stated objective as well as being knowledgeable about the cricket. Also, I also earned high marks for the materials being useful and relevant to the session. Some feedback was to have more examples of things I've made in my classroom as well as example of what kids could have made. 
but since I don't have a cricket in my classroom that the kids have access to, I was unable to provide those types of examples. I didn't want the session to focus on the pretty items you can design and make for your classroom. I intended to make it connect to the grade level curriculum. I also informed the staff that I had asked the PTA to fund the school a cricket machine. My administration helped me complete the form and we submitted it to the PTA. My first PD session on Seesaw was off to a great start. I ran into a few hiccups with gaining access to some of my examples, but felt it still ran smoothly. I ended up having to cut a few slides because I was running short on time. I wish I didn't have to cut an activity from the session, but I felt it was important not to run over on time to keep the morale up of the staff. I wish that I did have more time to explore that last activity because I felt the staff would have learned a lot more about Seesaw and how it works. Pictured are some artifacts that I took away from that session. Some of the artifacts that I collected from my session are from the activities that the staff completed about learning how to use the draw tool and the type tool. The staff completed a drawing about themselves and they could use the different types of drawing tools to do that. They also had access to the type tool as well. After my seesaw session, I sent out a feedback form. I had a lot of positive reviews on the feedback form. One area of improvement the staff wanted was more time to explore. I was trying to be respectful of their time and not run over, which is why I cut the last activity. Looking back, I wish I hadn't done that. Next time, I think I would cut some of the other information so the staff still has time to explore the activities of Seesaw and learning about the tools in a more hands-on way. I had sent out a Google form for my hands-on event asking the staff if they would attend and what specifically they wanted to learn about. I had 12 staff members sign up and when I reviewed what they wanted to learn most about, I got worried I wouldn't have enough time to meet each teacher's need during the hour-long session. I then started creating videos for the staff members to view asynchronously. My hope was that they would be able to refer back to them when needed or if I was unable to get to it during our session. I sent out a few emails to those who had signed up with links to my videos. I saw their specific topics and knew a video might be a better source for going back to revisit or to learn from. After my hands-on session, I sent out a feedback form. I included the videos that I had created in the form to help the staff who might have missed it or that they were able to go back and revisit it. On the side are a few pictures of what we have done in our school with our Cricut. I have been impressed with the level of interest in the machine and I keep telling the staff members they just need to keep playing around with it to get the hang of it. The best way to learn to use the Cricut is by doing. My last session was an optional session for those teachers who were interested in learning more about Seesaw or wanted help setting up their classes. This was my lowest turnout, but in the end, it ended up being a great session. I was able to help the teachers set up their classes, apply the settings they wanted, print out QR codes, and add activities to help meet the different areas of study. In the end, I didn't send around a feedback form, but was able to talk to each teacher as well as letting them know I am always here to help them. In the next slides that follow are five key concepts that I have linked to my internship. I have linked concept 3.2. I have been using Seesaw in my classroom since the fall of 2018. I've grown to love using it with my first grade students. When I had to think of a technology tool to use in my internship, I knew I had to use Seesaw. 
Seesaw is easy to use and it provides me with real-time data on how my students are completing tasks that I have chosen for them to complete. I can also comment on their work to help me guide my instruction. It also allows me to empower my students to create, reflect, share, and collaborate. I also have been using Google Forms to help me collect data on my PD sessions. Using these feedback forms, I can analyze what the teachers want or need help in with the technology tools that I have implemented. Key Concept 13.2 I've been using Google Docs since I started at Loyola. I now use Google Docs slides and forms on a weekly basis. I've kept my internship journal reflections in a Google Doc and I use the Google Forms and Google Slides to present, send, and receive feedback for my professional development sessions. I have been able to take the information from my Google Documents and really see how I can implement change with my coworkers inside my school. Key Concept 14.1 When I began in ET691, I knew I'd be implementing an internship at my school. My principal and I thought of what would benefit my school most, and that idea was to show two technology tools for the teachers to learn about. We decided to show Seesaw and a Cricut machine. I began planning my internship proposal. My first task was to determine the staff's level on the ACOT model. Then I would introduce two two new technology tools and help the staff implement those tools in their own classrooms. My goal was to move our staff up the ACOT model so that they were using technology in a purposeful way. Once I finalized the plan, I took my idea to my principal. My principal gave me her approval and signed off allowing me to move forward. Key Concept 14.2 in order to activate my internship at my school, I had created a proposal and received a written permission from my principal. I came up with specific goals to ensure I had a good design for my internship. I wanted to implement two new technology tools at my school. I would host after-school PD sessions where the staff could learn how to navigate the new tools and how to implement them into their own classrooms. I also recorded a few tutorials to help advance the staff up the ACOT model, as well as allowing them to be able to watch on their own time, having the ability to pause the video if needed. After meeting with my principal about the two technology tools, I brought her my written out plan and was given her approval to implement my sessions. Key Concept 16.2 When I began my internship, I knew there would be challenges and changes along the way. I created a sample timeline as well as a journal with pre-filled dates to keep me on track. This timeline ended up having to change a few times along the way, but I kept a reflection journal to help me reflect upon the experience and how to proceed in the future. During my internship, I would add to the journal to help me keep, help keep myself organized and how I would proceed with an ex upcoming session. I ended up hitting a few bumps because of the snow and other scheduled events. After each session, I would sit down and write what went well, what didn't, and thoughts for the next session. I also wanted to keep the staff engaged, so I asked for their input in the upcoming sessions. With each reflection and change I encountered, it helped me see the best ways to help my coworkers implement the new technology. What went well for my internship was the support I have of my principal and the staff members at Edgewater Elementary. I really couldn't have asked for a more supportive setting. I learned that it's okay to ask for help with staff members or asking the PTA to buy us a cricket. Changes I would have made were to break up some of my more um, informative sessions into smaller sessions. I think if I had broken up those sessions into smaller ones, the staff may have gotten more out of it. But my only reason for not doing that was being concerned that they might get frustrated of having so many PD sessions. My next steps are to attend the Common Ground Conference this May, and I will also try to have more PDs at the beginning of next year to help the staff set up the seesaw and help them with creating stuff with the cricket in their classrooms. Thank you for 
Thank you for watching my presentation and providing me with feedback.